Good morning internet. Yesterday after my tour I came back to the hotel and had a swim in the pool and then just hung out by the pool until it clouded over again. And then last night we had planned to have a picnic down at the beach and it was pretty windy and a bit cold because of the wind but we still had a picnic anyway, it just was a bit shorter than we planned. This picnic I've never been on. It's so windy. It's fairly windy over there than it is here. So we're winning. We won that for a shelter. It's New Zealanders, we know how to pick a sheltered spot. I don't think too many people will last long in this cold. It's not that bad. Oh, it's here, it's gone. Where they are. So people who have been on the bird watching tour, what's this bird idea? Yeah. <laughs> sparrow! Is it a sparrow? <laughs> and then afterwards came back here and a few of us played Scrabble till late at night and until our brains ran out of ability to add the scores up. <laughs> this is going to make a really boring video. Yeah. <laughs> you're just going to you're gonna have to speed it up so much. Yeah, this is the, the equivalent of the Ute video. I'm just going to have a, like, a 40 minute video of Jake choosing a word. <laughs> Another exciting day ahead of us. We're going on a glass bottom boat tour. And then... We've got a pretty free day after that. Might go to the beach again, might go walking in the national park, might just go exploring. So it's a nice combination of doing exciting things and relaxing sort of holiday. Well, the mainstay of coral here is this is what's referred to as brain coral. <coughs> no prizes for getting what's called brain coral. Mmm, it's like a brain. And when you get an outcrop of coral like this one, it's what's referred to as a bommie. B O W M I E. Sailors hate bommies, they come along in their boats, and of course, they can't always see them underneath and uh, can run into them. As you probably know, corals are a living animal on their surface, and they have polyps. There's usually five to eight tentacles on each polyp, and they extend out at night time to feed. And on the brain coral, there's so many thousands of the polyps out feeding, it's just like a soft fur covering. So all this intricate detail you can see here now literally disappears at night time. And then they retract during the day. And, and then they come out again. And they build up their limestone and skeleton body over the years. I had a marine biologist on board one day who majored in corals and um, I'd often wondered how old this bombing might be, and his guesstimation was that it would be at least 500 years old. Oh, wow. So we thought. And just to give you a little bit of perspective about colours in coral, 90% of all corals are brown. Okay, even in the Great Barrier Reef, in fact, only about 5% of the total area up there have lovely colours. In there's some areas that have a tremendous amount of colour, but in reality, uh, only 5% of the total area is like a colour. And having said that about the colours in corals, a lot of corals actually change colour during the year. And you're here at a good time that uh, we get this, see this blue kind of colour coming through? Mm. Well, the ones that do get the blue, they have a cycle. And generally from around about March right through to July, they're brown all over and then they uh, July, August, they start changing 
and some of them get a white edge which then turns to blue, others um, uh, go a lovely blue ring right around the edge of the coral and in some cases the whole colony changes to blue as you'll see as we go around. It's what's called the sea anemone and the sea anemone tentacles are poisonous to fish except for the sea anemone fish which is more commonly known as the clownfish, which is like Nemo, he was a clownfish. Oh, yeah. Straight down in that gap there now, right at the top, you might be able to see all those little worms oh, yeah. hanging about. Yeah. So uh, other fish won't go in there. And so the uh, sea of enemy fish, the clownfish, he lives in, they become immune from the sting. So they live in there. They have a symbiotic relationship as it's called. They look after each other and of course, uh, the anemone gives it good protection from other predators because other fish won't go in there. corals here, they're hard but they're brittle so if you're just down on the edge of them they break, break through. And there's some staghorn coral here. <laughs> See so this time of year they actually lay sticky clumps of egg on the side, eggs and so on, on the side of the coral and see that and so they're always busy hunting other fish out of their territory like he's just done then. Yeah, uh -huh. Been down there for years and years. There he is. <laughs> Nearly all reef fish here are, are territorial. They live in the same spot all the time. That's the Arturi I was telling you about. Mm. We're obviously invading your species. Come up to have a bit of a look at us. See the white on the brown coral there? That's, it's pretty, that's isn't just it? new. That A month ago that was all brown. See corals have a particular enzyme in them which is affected by the sun which creates the colour change and depending on whether it's uh, at this time of year or winter or whatever. Another fellow just lying straight there at the top of the coral. He's got white spots on him. In the Norfolk language, we, we call them stiddy. Not steady, but stiddy. The reason they get called stiddy is because in Norfolk, stiddy kind of means slow and boring. <laughs> we don't use that term for people, of course. <laughs> right. They call this cascading violet, this one. Very pretty at this time of year. Wow. There's a lot of those fish. Yeah, it's beautiful now, this uh, marine blue colours out. Yeah, look at this, isn't that pretty? Wow. You know, just five, six weeks ago, it's just all brown. Wow. There's a sea urchin there, a small one with white on it, on the side of the... Yeah. Oh, like a pin yeah, cushion. Yeah. Oh, it's a big one there. Long black yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's, there's that particular sea urchin. And then there's a little gap just near the bush coral there. Sorry. And oh, yeah. you might see some long yeah. black spines. Yes. Yeah, that's what we yeah. saw. And yeah. I saw it first. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's right there. It's what's it's called the needle there. spine sea urchin. They're very territorial, and in the main they're nocturnal. And what they do, I've been watching the one ever since I've been operating, it's always been there, and it's always been that size. And um, they, uh, at late afternoon they start coming out, and then they um, only move a metre or so at night, then they go back every morning, exact same spot. Anyway, I had a, another marine biologist on board one day who 
knew a lot about sea urchins and he reckons that that one there would be at least 80 years of age. He said they live for a long time. Those fish, they've got like bluey tails. 